Hello and welcome to this very unusual edition of Off the Cuff. Unusual because our guests today are two people you become familiar with only very recently. But these are very important people for us in India. And to tell you what, they are not exactly Indian. Uh, they are Americans. They are the people who know more about the Trump administration and Donald Trump's way of thinking and approach to India than almost any other Indian does. Uh, we have Mr. Shalab Kumar, who, was, who is the chairman of Indian American Council of, uh, of, of, of Donald Trump, but also a member of the Trump transition team, member for finance, and we have his daughter Manasvi. Uh, Manasvi is the ambassador, India ambassador for Republican Hindu convention. Uh, but as I said, she's somebody we are more familiar with because she was our 2010 Miss India. So Manasvi, Shalp Kumarji, thank you very much. And I am today uh, joined by Maro Khanayat, uh, my colleague, who will be helping us conduct this conversation. Thank you for having us here. Um, thank you. And uh, tell us a little, about, little bit about you and President Trump. When did you first meet and how did this great equation come about? Well, that goes uh, uh, quite some time ago. Uh, so I've known him for a while, but my first uh, interaction with him was in 2012 uh, presidential election where he played a, a significant role as a supporter. Uh, so uh, I was, uh, uh, of course, supporting Mitt Romney, and I happened to meet him. Uh, I drew a little uh, friendship from there, and uh, it's continued on from that point on. What was your first meeting like? Well, the first real meeting, uh, that was a long meeting. Uh, that was on July 9th of 2016. Uh, that is, was set up by uh, former speaker, uh, father of the modern Republican Party, that's Newt Gingrich. And um, uh, unlike some other or most Indian Americans, uh, we are focused on policy. So uh, Newt Gingrich had set up this meeting, and uh, we had not decided which presidential candidate to endorse or support at that time. So he had asked that um, uh, go have a meeting, and there is no time limit. Uh, don't come back unless you have all your questions answered. and. Uh, so we had a long discussion on every policy issue, where he stands on everything. And uh, when we found, or uh, I determined that um, uh, he is the closest that matches the four core principles of a Republican Hindu coalition, uh, that is um, uh, free enterprise, fiscal discipline, firm family values, and uh, uh, firm stand on foreign policy. And we saw that uh, it matches, and he's very open. He's like a businessman. Uh, it's not like a politician that you don't get straight answers uh, to questions. You know, every uh, question I asked of him, uh, it was uh, a very clear, clear answer. Uh, so, you know, it wasn't you have to second guess. What's the first question he asked you about India? Uh, he did not really have to ask me a lot of questions about India. Uh, initially, what he wanted to, to know uh, was that, you know, we have met before as to what exactly you have in mind, what your uh, role is, uh, and uh, we are discussing more uh, Indian Americans, and particularly as uh, it was represented to him that uh, uh, I am chairman of the Republican Hindu Coalition, so he wanted to know uh, about uh, Hindus, and in fact, uh, we discussed uh, about Hindus a fair amount. You know, that was our, our discussion. And uh, uh, India, he had some comments uh, that, you know, he's always very proud of this city itself uh, because he has investments here in Mumbai. A couple of landmarks and, here, yes. So, so he's, he's always talking about that. And uh, I say, yeah, he says, I know uh, Mumbai, uh, great people. He'll say, great people. And uh, Indians, he just generally said, uh, India is a very nice country. I like investments in India. 
So that's, that was his uh, general comment about but, but Mr. Kumar, you were convinced of uh, Donald Trump being the right candidate. How hard was it to convince other Indian Americans? Because Indian Americans have largely been Democrats. That was actually a lot of fun. And, uh, and my daughter Manaswi here, she'll tell you, because she was with me uh, in most of these events. We held almost 200 events, average uh, attendance of uh, 200 people. And uh, Manaswi, you want to tell a little bit about that? Yeah, it's difficult when you don't have facts. When we were speaking to people, we had facts. We were going them, approaching them with policies and what his policies are, uh, how friendly they are with India, how in sync they are with our uh, core values, core principles. By the way, when he first met us, he was like, um, oh, Hindus are very peaceful people. So, um, you know, um, so when we approached people with uh, facts and figures, it wasn't difficult at all. And uh, my father, he's a tremendous speaker. And when we would address crowds, uh, sometimes 90% people uh, would be Democrats. And when we would educate them and make them aware, they would all turn. They would, they would all switch and they'd be, they'd be wondering why they were not Republicans at the first place. So no, actually, it's not that difficult. It's really not that difficult um, because I found it uh, to my delight uh, to convert. Uh, I, I really love to have, uh, at this point in time, uh, give me a... Indian American, Hindu American, who is uh, not a Trump supporter. And I find it rather challenging. So let me see over there if within two hours I cannot convert him to, uh, uh, but, to a... But sir, a, why only Hindu Americans? What about other non-Hindu Americans? Sure. Are they Trump coming. supporters? Sure. I knew this was Of course, coming. because we are a Republican no, Hindu coalition. And, uh, uh, you know, this is also something which is very interesting. This is something about in... Uh, in Hindu blood, that is somewhat shy about uh, being proud of uh, being a Hindu. I, I really am. I'm a little critical of that. I'll tell you what. I'm, because I'm a Hindu. I'm very proud of being a but Hindu. Let me, and I'm let very me, proud of my colleague being a Muslim. There is no, that's no okay. You see, when we have Republican Hindu coalition, it was framed, it was formed, uh, patterned, uh, after Republican Jewish Coalition. Right. So there is a very powerful organization which is essentially controls at least all the conservative policy in the United States. Uh, no uh, candidate for president, no candidate for governor, no candidate for uh, senate or congressman uh, can uh, win without the endorsement support of Republican Jewish Coalition. And uh, we were um, organized uh, after the idea was born, after I attended their annual conference uh, in um, 2015, so April your, your of 2015. your inspiration was the Republican Jewish, Jewish Coalition. So, see, when uh, we discussed with them, uh, I was invited to join their leadership. I uh, was probably the first uh, non-Jew uh, person that was invited to join the Republican Jewish Coalition. And we started to discuss, there were about 500 businessmen, we started to discuss the uh, demographics uh, of uh, Hindus in the United States. And it's amazing when the people find out what their demographics are. Uh, Republican Jewish Coalition, uh, your number of Jewish Americans in the country are about 5.5 million. Hindu Americans are 4.2 million. And Hindu Americans are not just Indian Americans, there are lots of Hindu Americans that are not Indian Americans. They are from Caribbean, and they are from uh, Africa, they are from, uh, and even from South America. So that's, when we say Hindu American, it's a broader term. So you prefer to be called Hindu American rather than Indian American? Would, uh... Because we will be excluding so many Hindu Americans. If I just said Indian Americans, what are we going to say about Caribbean Americans? Caribbean Hindu Americans. What happens to Muslim Americans, you know, Muslim Indian Americans? Sorry, I'm going to butt in. Hinduism is so beautiful. It's, it's very secular. It's a way of life. We don't uh, say a particular god or follow a particular book. It's a, it's a way of life. It's so beautiful, uh, you know. And uh, we're very, very secular. In fact, our head in India is a Muslim. So we're extremely secular. We're extremely inclusive. Um, 
you know. Uh, so you are not excluding anybody. We are not excluding anybody. We have people from all religions in uh, Republican Hindu coalition. It's just Hindu is a very broad category. That's why we choose to. Our co-chairman, Speaker Newt Gingrich, is a Christian. One more question. Charu Lata has a question. Uh, with all of this conversation that I'm listening to, do you think um, it may be a better idea someday for America to drop all prefixes completely and adopt just one word, American? And do you think that might help a party, be it Republican or Democrats, but do you think it might help in the long run? Not at all. I will be uh, totally against that. Uh, in fact, uh, there was uh, one person... Uh, who tried, uh, I will not name that person, uh, a, a prominent uh, uh, politician who was a candidate for president also, tried that path and miserably failed because America is an amalgamation, uh, amalgamation of con uh, people from all over the world. So if I'm an Italian-American, I'm very proud of being an Italian-American. If I'm a Jewish American, I'm a Catholic American, I am, you know, I'm a, a Catholic Italian American. Okay, I'm very proud. So everybody should be very proud of their heritage. This is what the, uh, the country is. There is no division as a result of that. There are lots of other divisions in the country on the philosophy. Uh, the divisions in American society uh, are not based on these things. America is a, is a very, very different country. Will you explain Donald Trump to us a little bit? Do we worry about him? Do we be happy that he's there? Is he as nutty as he's made out to be? Or is he a normal person inside uh, his, his very, uh, very I, I think, uh, unique hair? I will have uh, uh, Manasvi answer part of from a humanistic side, right. but I'll tell you also which I've gone on the record by making some statements about Donald Trump, so I'll go on that side. So, because she knows uh, him as well as I do, she's probably attended uh, at least 20 personal meetings with, uh, with Donald Trump. And uh, so as a human being, uh, she can answer that question. I will only tell you my impressions. Um, I see a leader who's very daring. Um, I see somebody who will say things as they are and not a politician who will be absolutely perfect and say the perfect words. Um, I think uh, he's very young at heart and he's very energetic. And sometimes, you know, I often joke about it that if there's ever, uh, they, there could be a competition between our Prime Minister Modi and President Trump on endurance. Um, so while we were campaigning, uh, where Hillary was attending like say two events a day, uh, President Trump, then candidate Trump, was attending like five to six events a day. Um, Mr. Modi can do 15 or 16. See, right? that's I I said, you, that yes. There could be uh, competition where endurance and stamina is concerned. Right. And also I see somebody who connects with people. Like um, I've seen him addressing and interact with small groups, medium-sized groups, and rallies. Um, particularly our uh, rally that happened on 15th October, there were about 9,000 uh, Hindu Americans, and uh, he was connecting with them. Like he, I mean, the crowd went crazy. So I think these are my impressions. Um, but having said that, uh, you also mentioned Mr. Modi. Do you see a lot of similarities between the two, and are there any differences? Because a lot of people in India would want to know that hopefully there are some differences between the two. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why you wish that, but uh, no, I, I, I see a lot of similarities. But first, I'll uh, answer. Shaker's question, uh, uh, I've gone on the record stating that I truly believe, believe as a Hindu, as Hindu-American, and having been taught uh, uh, in my life... As a son, uh, as, as, son, as, son of as, India, I've become as, American. Okay, so uh, I've said that it's uh, quite probable he may, that is Donald Trump, may usher Ram Rajya in, uh, in the United States. I didn't say India, but I say <laughs> in Ram Rajya in the United States. Now, that is a very deep statement. It's a, it's a, I had to think about it for a week before, uh, you know, 
sleep over it overnight and <laughs> take my long showers <laughs> to to that's why i mostly invent and that's why i think uh, deeply when i take long showers hour hour and a half shower so so, so after that i after that i hope nick christoph wrote a whole article on ram rajya <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so you know why why i say that um united states had drifted in the wrong direction not just only in the last 8 years but uh let's say the last 10 to 15 years it has drifted in the wrong direction and uh it needed a, a businessman it needed a non politician it needed somebody to straighten out its path otherwise the civilization we know of uh the american civilization was going to go down the tubes otherwise i would say you know i came to uh united states in 1969 and uh, the country was headed towards india of 1970s and uh, certainly i can't stand to see that in uh, you know that's why of course you know i threw in 100% of my support uh, with him but uh, uh, ram rajya in what way in in you see the country's policies had been essentially hijacked by lobbyists so the washington was getting governed and this is not just democrats or republicans is we'll call us call it establishment establishment was run by lobbyists that is you know advocacy advocacy is fine but the uh, the impact of lobbyists had gone so much that there was really no policy that was being uh, uh, made uh, legislation being made uh, which will address the concerns of americans and and that's what actually changed that's why if you look at the map of victory for trump is all the whole country is pretty much red if i may interrupt you that's for america but uh, what, what convinces india that he is positive for india and can in, can you as an indian as an indian indian uh, can you trust trump absolutely see first of all what you see is um a couple of recommendations i'll make uh to people and and i'll i'll say that to uh, indian government as well he had a 12 minute speech on october 15th it was the first time he's talking about any other country when he addressed the october 15th rally of hindu americans there read that speech and read every single word otherwise you try to speculate what would he say what would he do read that speech and you will know what he will do because he is true to every word he has given in any other campaign speeches his first uh, executive orders first actions in the first 30 days are 100% totally consistent with what he campaigned on when i say lobbyists and uh what the feelings are of american people most politicians established po- establishment politicians what they do is they will talk in the campaigns on terms that will please americans then when they go to washington dc they change and here is a fresh blood that has come into the country that is same on a campaign and same in exec- uh, execution now coming to uh, india india so here is uh, notice a few things very carefully okay and uh, uh, i must say uh, we had a significant role to play in um, uh, framing his uh, speech the 12 minute speech uh, it was reviewed uh, his um, uh, key policy advisor uh, that's uh, stephen miller uh, also on uh, immigration policy jeff uh, sessions uh, senator jeff sessions he was there and so uh, his whole team was there steven minushin was there so the speech every single word of that was uh, reviewed uh, and then finally approved and that's the speech he gave he he only deviated from that uh, a little bit but i'll i'll tell you that too but uh, here's what he said we love hindus we love india as a uh, uh when i go to the white house uh indian americans 
will have, Indian Americans and India will have a best friend in the White House. Uh, he uh, praised Modi, he says, as a great prime minister uh, at who has reduced, has attempted to, or something like that, he said, he has reduced bureaucracy in the country, uh, moving in the right direction. And so, and also he addressed the issue of uh, Mumbai terror. He addressed the issue of um, uh, cross-border terrorism. So he, he addressed all those issues. And again, you look at his actions and his campaign switches. They're totally in, uh, they are con consistent. <laughs> You say that he's been consistent with his speeches, and he has. And uh, the H-1B uh, visa issue has been one uh, where he's spoken about that in his speeches as well. And as recently as this morning, Mr. Modi has expressed concern about the issue. And in fact, he's gone to the extent of saying that, uh, uh, that Mr. Trump and his decision should be far-sighted as well as balanced. Now, you're seen as a direct line between Mr. Modi and Washington, D.C., uh, would you agree with the Indian concerns and Mr. Modi's concerns in this, on the crucial H-1B visa issue? It's uh, appropriate for uh, Prime Minister Modi to express his concern. You know, if you don't express a concern, it wouldn't be appropriate either. He should express a concern. But as a concern, he could express a concern. Uh, I have uh, stated that publicly. I have absolutely no concern. And I've assured uh, Indians, Indian Americans, that there should really be no concern on the H-1 visa. Everybody is speculating. Do you, find it, every, hard to, uh, everybody, do you find it hard to defend Mr. Trump in India? Do you find it hard Not to at all. You, you know, it's uh, today's day and age of Google Acharya, I call it. <laughs> <laughs> so you have Google. By the way, this is what we do when we convert uh, uh, Hindu Americans, Indian Americans to uh, Republican side, uh, in a, what I mentioned to you, I said uh, two hours, give me two hours. And I ask everybody, okay, get your Google Acharya out. What I'll tell you is research yourself, then decide. Because, you know, if you just don't dig into facts, once you actually go inside, then when you come to know real policies and real issues, then you could appropriately choose uh, sides. So on for example, on H-1 visas. Now, how many of you uh, here have heard his comments on Senator Tim Scott, who's a dear friend of ours, um, from South Carolina? Uh, he was put in on the show and asked a question on uh, legal immigration of skilled workers. So what did he say? Here's what the conversation was. Uh, when Tim Scott, Senator Tim Scott, asked about uh, what do you think of uh, H-1 visa holders or um, green card holders, and uh, Trump, uh, at that time, candidate Trump, he himself thought of a person. He said, look, I know of a person who uh, could not find uh, a, a, who was uh, having difficulty adjusting to the American uh, immigration system, and he went back to India. And he created 5,000 jobs in India. And he goes like this, are we crazy to let people like that go? He is absolutely, totally for skilled uh, immigration. Legal skill immigration. There's no doubt in my mind. When the people worry about these H-1 visas, you know, and mostly all the IT people have come and talked to me, um, your uh, principals of the IT industry here, and uh, you see, look at the reality on the ground. You have an economy that is going to explode. Four to five percent growth in, in the America. Country. American economy. In American economy. Is going to there is already a huge shortage of IT professionals in the United States. That whole domain has essentially been handed over in the last 10 years 
to Indians or Indian Americans. U.S. Chamber of Commerce has come out so clearly for uh, legal skill, it's called STEM, uh, immigration. So that's just a fact. Uh, President Trump is not stupid <laughs> to kill the economy <laughs> of the United States <laughs> because the United States uh, economy cannot grow uh, 4 to 5 percent without the skilled legal immigration. In fact, uh, people start to uh, speculate uh, this particular order is going to come out. This legislation, there was a legislation by a Californian uh, Democratic congresswoman, and people started to speculate on that. Now, that speculation also should be uh, put to ground. Uh, Senator Orrin Hatch from Utah, he just introduced legislation about a week ago, which, which I've been saying that, that he just uh, ratified what I've said, uh, that uh, he has proposed increase in the number of H-1 visas. That is uh, 85,000 today. He's a, he's a very powerful Republican senator. Absolutely he is. And uh, so he, he's come out and proposed that. And, and also not just only that, there is another very big problem uh, in the uh, United States right now from previous administrations. There are a uh, lot, lot of, I don't know exactly number, but I'm told that could be as many as 1 million H-1 visa holders in uh, United States. And the system is so bad right now that when their green card is approved, green card is approved, but it will take them as many as 50, 5 zero, not 15, 5 zero, 50 years to get their green card. So <laughs> you are qualified for a green card, but you will wait 50 years after you have retired to get a green card. That's, that system needs to be fixed, and uh, our president will fix it. But, uh, Mr. Kumar, why didn't he include Pakistan in this extremely controversial travel ban? I believe you made the same suggestion. Well, it's not, I would not call it a bit controversial. There's only a few uh, small group of people, probably uh, maybe paid demonstrators, who make this uh, uh, to be a controversial issue. It's a very, very, very small issue. Uh, in terms of uh, Pakistan being included, uh, we are in favor of, um, that is RHC, Republican Hindu Coalition, is in favor of including uh, Pakistan on uh, this uh, ban, but there is a logic. There is a logic behind uh, why Pakistan is not included, why Saudi Arabia is not included, when some of the other countries are not included. The, this is a temporary ban, and the ultimate purpose of this is to create extreme vetting. But isn't there already Ext a vetting system in nope. place? Nope. Well, your former CIA chief seems to suggest that. Nope. There is no, no. Actually, the, our intelligence services have comp clearly said that. When we ask them the question, do we really have a foolproof system? If you want to have a foolproof system, go study the uh, uh, Israeli, Israeli airlines. There is no hijacking has ever taken place. For Israel, what is the name of that airline? I forget. El Al. Yeah. Well, so, I mean, some took place in the past, but not for a long time. So, so be, because they do a really good wedding of who is going to be a passenger. So if we could figure out a way of doing extreme wedding, then there is no need to have a ban from anywhere. So the countries which are included in there, uh, except for Iran, uh, Iran, there is a, that's just a different equation altogether, uh, and I'll tell you that as well. But the other countries don't really have a government. If you don't have a government, you know, it's Wild West or it's Northwest Frontier, okay, then who's going to do the vetting? So therefore, they say Pakistan claims, and we sort of see it, that there is uh, at least a government in some ways moving in the right direction. I've publicly praised uh, Nawaz Sharif in that respect, that if he had his ways, he will uh, choose the Indian path so fast that, you know, people will be very surprised. Because I, I believe that. It's, it's really the other forces in Pakistan, the ISI and the military, that push him 
uh, in a and, different and, direction. And, and does Mr. Does President Trump share this belief? Uh, he is uh, of the opinion. He just simply goes by this. <clears throat> just tell me where you are. Don't give me a two side. Don't be two faced. Absolutely hates people who are two faced. Manasu, before we go to the next question, uh, since you worked so closely with Mr. Trump, were you ever? What's he like? personally in terms of his interactions and were you ever worried about the kind of reputation that he seemed to have acquired with all these revelations during the campaign? Uh, well, honestly... His locker room talk and his... Hmm. You know, I think... Candles. Uh, with women especially, you mean, right? Um, I would answer that with, say, maybe two questions. What is the last time you saw a woman campaign manager, especially Republican Party. Uh, and uh, Kellyanne Conway was fantastic. She did an amazing job. Um, and also, if you saw the number of women who were at his rallies, uh, also especially Hindu uh, women, you would not ask me that question, uh, you know, about the whole controversy. The women in America, they actually saw beyond uh, a locker room talk. I think if we start making decision on who's going to rule the country based on uh, a talk like that, we are doomed. So um, they looked beyond it. Uh, they saw um, they saw the issues that actually mattered: um, the economics, the policies, uh, the prosperity. And I'm glad we chose such a great uh, president. Your last answer, Mr. Kumar, reminded me that uh, you still didn't tell us of any differences between Mr. Modi and <laughs> Mr. Trump? That answer, we didn't hear from you. Or the any differences, similarities? Yeah, oh, similarities are plenty. And differences. Uh, similarities are plenty. Big similarities. Similarities. Uh, you know, uh, America first. Make in India. Uh, make both, both uh, countries, you know, <coughs> the responsibility of each head of state is to make their country great. So... Big similarities there. And um, um, both have actually the same philosophy. Um, that is economic prosperity regardless of your social status, regardless of race, religion, color, whatever it is. This really that's, does not come into picture, does not come into picture with Trump, does not come into picture with Prime Minister Modi is simple economic prosperity. That is the fundamental driving force. So uh, very clear uh, with respect to that. And uh, then uh, the foreign policy, uh, they're very vocal about that. So uh, lots of similarities uh, between, the, uh, between the two. And, and differences? The differences will be more regional besides the hairstyle <laughs> <laughs> the uh, you know it's uh, you obviously you cannot uh, be a uh, an american i mean if we ask uh, prime minister modi to all of a sudden become american and uh, president trump to become indian you, you know that's just can't happen their mindset cannot be uh, exactly in that that way because you're indian you're indian you know there is a, a, a a lot of differences where you come from. Uh, again, America is going to come from the Constitution. It's going to come from George Washington. It's going to come from, um, you know, uh, Madison or uh, Hamilton. So those people, that's your driving thought. Absolutely no government. That's what they're going to come from. That's what the, the birth of the nation was. India's birth was not that way. So there will be some differences. Uh, and I, I tell you this something also very interesting. How, how much people, I don't know how many people here know about Speaker Newt Gingrich, who is the co-chairman of yes, the Republican Hindu Coalition. He is like the Deen Dehal Upadhyay of the Republican Party in the United States. He's the father of the modern Republican Party. And he's changed the world. Uh, by, for the first time, uh, introducing the concept of called Contract with America in 1994 when he... There's a famous book. The, that, that time, the uh, Congress uh, became Republican after, like, 50-year gap. 
that's where they took over the, uh, the control of the Congress, the uh, U.S. Parliament, essentially. Uh, so uh, Newt Gingrich said that there is a speech uh, he made almost e e one year ago where uh, he su even surprised me. Sometimes he does. Uh, uh, so he made a comment. You know, you will find this is now going to February of uh, 2016. So he remarked, he said, uh, like as if he's looking through the tunnel vision. He says, you know what? Uh, the biggest challenge between uh, President Reagan uh, or President uh, Trump and Prime Minister Modi, I mean, this is far away, but he's still making that comment will be that they will be competing with each other for prosperity of both countries. They'll be competing with each other. They'll, have, they'll butt heads with each other on certain policies. But the overall, uh, the uh, commonality between the two is so great that it will work out great. But, you know, for example, he also mentioned uh, that uh, uh, there will be a time when President Trump and Prime Minister Modi will be competing to keep the brain, these IT professionals, that Trump would want them in the U.S. And, <laughs> and Modi would want them in India. So, you know, that's where the competition will be. And I'll tell you the biggest difference. One does yoga, one does golf. <laughs> Hi, my name is Prerna and uh, you said, you know, the RSC is modeled on the RJC. Uh, now, the Jewish coalition has a Zionist agenda. So would you say that the RSC also has a Hindutva agenda? And, you know, if that is so, isn't that inherently divisive? Uh, again, there is a lot of, uh, uh, lot of assumptions you make. Have you read the manifesto or the core principles of Republican Jewish coalition? So please do not go out and say Zionist without knowing the facts. So, so first, it's a feel. It's just maybe you think, okay? Republican Jewish coalition, is its base principle is to act as a bridge between conservative Jewish Americans and Republican policy makers. That is its primary agenda and that's how it operates. Uh, it definitely supports the state of Israel and in a way there is not, uh, we do not have a, a Democrat Jewish coalition. Uh, we have only a Republican Jewish coalition. That Republican uh, Jewish coalition does uh, promote the interest of uh, the country of Israel uh, and uh, of the Jewish people, uh, but uh, uh, that's not divisive. And Republican Hindu coalition pattern after that self is uh, a it's, it's essentially its um, core principle or its mission statement is to act as a single unified platform to have <clears throat> the voices of Hindu Americans and Indian Americans be heard on the policy tables of the United States. Uh, Mr. Kumar, uh, we are given to believe that you are one of the people being considered for the job of U.S. Ambassador to India. Is that uh, <laughs> a job that interests you? And uh, if you get it, what would you do differently? No comment. <laughs> Finally, is being a good American. Good American Washingtonian. No comment. At this point, we have to call it a day. We can go on for a long time. I think we have just used the expression left liberals now. And we can start again for two hours after this. So thank you very much. This was a wonderful edition of Off the Cuff. I am not sure I can repeat a star cast of guests like this again. But we'll keep trying. And you keep watching this again and again. Uh, you watch it on our YouTube channel after you watch it on NDTV. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.